Hey everyone. Today is August the 9th, and I wanted to, I know I said I wasn't going to make a video until the end of August, but I wanted to come today and give you an update on the work that's going into this book because what I'm working on is really a part of a zeitgeist that's going on worldwide. And it's in working on this book now for the last three months, I'm putting in eight hours a day and I'm doing fine, actually, if anybody's wondering. Uh, actually, a little bit of sun showed up. That's all I guess I kind of needed. Um, I, I, I won't call it writer's block. We'll call it writer's challenge. It's coming through, getting through that slowly. Um, I guess maybe I need some sort of muse to give the next level of inspiration as I go forward, but it's coming along. But the topics that are being discussed are changing so much of my view towards everything, changing so much of my views. A, a lot, I mean, a lot of the stuff I wrote in Falling for Truth now is up for grabs as to how important it is. I'm moving to the next stage. And it's really interesting, as I'm going to be talking about in the book, what I'm writing about here, which is exiting Plato's cave, is, um, is stuff I was working on 18, 20 years ago. I have still have stacks of notes on this material that I'm going back to to dig into, but after my death experience, I got focused on other areas, things that are more rounded and labeled in the spiritual world, you might say, or presented as <clears throat> the, the, what should be the focus when I see actually it's what I'm writing now. So I'm going to go over a bit of that. I'm going to go over the concepts, a bit of the concepts of reincarnation and soul traps. I want to let you have some. Uh, really good web websites and YouTube channels where you can go and look into this yourself while you're waiting um, until the first part of the book is ready. And of course, we want to talk about Plato's Cave because it, it, in itself, it's all about exiting Plato's Cave. So uh, I'll start today with a quote that comes from Wayne Bush. I'm going to do all of this as a uh, audio video, of course, to save the upload space. So, you know, okay, I'm back. And I'm going to start with a quote by Wayne Bush, who has a spectacular website called trickedbythelight.com. It's down below. Wayne is a, I, I can, I actually now, after having read, th I've read through the entire site, actually. Uh, I consider him the utmost of modern philosophers. He's done a tremendous work and a, and a great job in presenting his ideas and his findings uh, through, through the study of near-death experiences to a lot of people. But I want to share this for you. A topic that has had much focus in the last 10 years or so comes under the subject soul traps. And in a, in a nutshell, is saying that non-human beings either created this realm or control this realm and bring human souls into an artificial world construct. They do this in order to farm humans for food, using our energy mainly in the form of fear and other negative emotions like the movie Monsters, Inc. as their source. When we die, we get tricked at the key moment when we can turn away from all this by aliens disguised as beings of light or former loved ones. You would then go into a tunnel of light or up a stairway of light. Doing either will cause us to, cause us to enter the reincarnation cycle and be back in another life in the soul farm. Now, like I say, this is getting a lot of... I've noticed it's been getting a tremendous amount of attention. Uh, David Icke is even going to have a book out on September the 1st on this very subject. It's going to be very different than mine. He already did a, a preview discussion about it. And there is a – and this is, this is a bit of the problem I have with this subject. Wayne Bush's site is excellent for providing really good detail and really good links to people who've had – experiences that are not wonderful and happy in their afterlife realm. Another site that I highly recommend is the site is the YouTube channel Forever Conscious Research Channel. Mark is a again it seems like a really genuine uh, really good guy really trying to understand this realm. A lot of the videos are long they're like five six hours long so if you're like me you have to kind of skip and jump ahead and jump to certain sections and just kind of hope you get the best stuff in any video. Uh, but there's lots there. Um, the links will be below. This subject, this subject though has, has like I say, it, it's really gaining a tremendous 
uh, almost like a following of, of, of stuff that's coming up. You know, you can't, you can't hold truth away. You know, for a while, I, I talk about this, for a while there was first the, the – um, First was the insurgence about 10 or 12 years ago of flat earth study. Then it became uh, Mandela effect. Then it became uh, Tartaria and mud floods. And, and now it's kind of becoming this. And we're seeing this more and more stuff is coming up. And as I mentioned previously in many of my videos, what you're seeing right now is the reason there is so much locking of an attempted control of our reality is because there's the door available. The problem is to see the door and go through the door is not what most people want. And even the people studying this topic, because I've listened to a lot of videos, read a lot of websites on it, it's just like Plato's Cave. There's lots of people talking about Plato's Cave. There's lots of people talking about how to notice you're in Plato's Cave, how to notice the illusions of Plato's Cave. Do you know how many I've actually, and I've again, I've looked at a lot of different places, how many places actually are telling you to leave, how to exit Plato's Cave? Zero. None. I kid you not, I found zero. That includes books, movies, it doesn't matter. They all attempt to show you how to make how to make Plato's cave better, how to, how to improve your experience in the cave. In a sense, how to make prison life more, more enjoyable. And the problem is people see it, people can see it's an illusion. People can see that they're being tricked, but they believe the layer of what you might call the layer of religion, new age, new age philosophy, which is just you know, since the 1960s is exploded and is one of the biggest tricks that is being played on you. Um, because you have to, you, you have to see the truth of the situation. You have to see that the truth of your situation is you've been reincarnating in here over and over and over again. And it has nothing to do with karma. It has nothing to do with school. It has to do with you being you and I being tricked and deceived for hundreds or thousands of years in all different ways to come back into this realm to be a source of food for another a group of alien beings known as archons led by the creator of this realm, the Demiurge. And my book, if you're going to exit Plato's Cave, you have to know this and you have to prepare yourself not how to make this realm better. There are things you can do, of course, to function better within this realm but as long as you're trying to fix it as long as you're trying to as long as you're trying to make this place what you believe it's supposed to be it's got you trapped it's got you trapped it's it, there there are so many layers so many so many constructs to this there are so many contracts that are in place this is another really important part the construct is controlled by contracts and i have a huge piece on this in, in as i go through the book one of which is a, an, a video that came out from matt i hope i'm not rambling but i, I kind of did i just have some notes on a piece of paper it wasn't like you know i didn't have any written out specifically um matt did a video a couple of days ago i'll post a link to that as well below about wills and testaments and what is a last will and testament? And, and I mean, I've like some of you, I've looked into the birth certificate and how the birth certificate creates a certain type of contract within the system. But I never really thought about laws and wills and death certificates. And so watch the video. And he comes up with a couple of ideas. And without question, I now see it is one of the biggest tricks that's played on us. And I, in fact, have, just like Matt's done, I, I assume he's done it, I'm, I've written out my own new last will and testament, which is for my my soul and my spiritual essence, which is all that really matters. The material means zero, nothing. You shouldn't be focused on that as your last will. And, and again, when you go through the word will, testament, what they actually mean, what they mean legally, it, it's, um, it's a pretty amazing thing. So that's going to be a whole chapter in my book. I'm not going into law tremendously. It's just going to have a bit of one chapter. But this this concept around death affects every single one of us. And every single one of us is pushed by the system to have this thing called a last will and testament. Well, why don't we have a, as Matt suggested, why don't we have a last will and testament that is all about our soul and our spiritual essence and that 
we're done with the clown world. We're done with the insanity. Because it's it's one of the, and again I'm going through I'm going to, I'm going through this hopefully deeply in the book I've had a few people read an early version of it the the response has been wonderful Bart Marshall read it and gave me a wonderful um, a wonderful response so I'm I'm grateful for what he had to say to me in, in an email but he's also going through he he himself is going through an overturning of beliefs and ideas and concepts and of what's really important, of what we need to focus our time on, this is it. This is it. Because if this reality is moving where most of us think it's going, you know, an another artificial simulation in the simulation, do you want to risk being reincarnated back into that? <clears throat> do you really want to risk being reincarnated back into the, into the metaverse? Never mind how bad this is. That I mean, if this isn't enough to get you to want to leave, you know, Good luck with what you're going to get later on, really. But for those of us who are, who are seeing through this lie, um, quite simply, there's no better time to leave than now. And I think the system knows that. The system knows it's going to lose this this next five, ten years or so. It's going to lose, or you know, wherever. I'm not saying you have to die within the next five or ten years, but it's going to lose. It's going to lose a number of people. A number of souls are going to one way or another, be done with this place. They're going to see through it. But again, a lot of information gets presented about this. There's almost no information being presented anywhere of what you do. Just like my last will and testament thing, I'm going to write a complete, when that comes out in September, there'll be a complete chapter on all of the terminology, all the detail I studied on it to, to, to help you hopefully write your own really, really clearly and... Uh, go from there. So what my recommendation is, is, or, or what, what one of the things that my book is trying to do is going to be to um, not just give you information on the subject. I want to give you possible things you can do that will help you in this, in this experience. It will help you in actually exiting. That's, that's like I say, I've looked through movies, books, zero, none. Lots of people think they're giving information about exiting the cave. Lots of people think that's what they're doing. Lots of people think they're telling you how to overcome this thing known as a soul reincarnation trap. But when all you have to do is read it carefully, they're not. I even have a chapter that's going in the book on the Cathars. One of the first five chapters will be on the Cathars. From the standpoint of they saw th they saw the same thing. They saw that this is a place where the soul is trapped by an evil demiurge into a, an artificial simulation, and their only focus was to get out. Okay, great. They're on the same path as we are. Fantastic. So scary to the Catholic Church, they needed to you know have a crusade against them and exterminate them. But... Once you look into what is presented about them and what is presented about what they were doing, either A, they were doing act, they were accomplishing nothing, because what you see presented for what they did takes you nowhere, or B, they had, if they were really going to have success, they had to be doing something else completely. So a whole chapter has to go into overturning these beliefs, overturning these ideas. I'm doing another chapter on Plato's cave itself, <clears throat> which is showing. It's actually a terrible analogy. It's a terrible story. Have you actually read it? I don't know if you've actually, you know, we've seen lots of interpretations of it. And I was told over, and I've read it myself years ago, but I've been told over and over again how great it is, how a terrific analogy it is. It's, and when I finally now with new eyes sat down and read it in its completeness, there is... It has got huge omissions, huge gaps, huge things in it that should be that should be there that are not. <clears throat> so either the Plato's cave analogy is either a a uh, it's it's a it's a much longer version that's been edited down to the kind of crappy version we have now, or it's it's actually created as misdirection. There can't be no other other option because the most important things are not there. The most important things of understanding our reality, which is what this story is supposed to do, are not there. So I've got a whole chapter destroying that, right? A whole chapter, I guess, is destroying spirituality and the new age and 
and in other chapters, digging into what the Cathars were. Another chapter will be digging into all the movies that are supposedly presenting this information from Dark City to, to Westworld to whatever. And some of them are good, and, but most of them don't have any information on how to exit. So this is where the this is where the book is headed, and and I I I think it's important. I think it's absolutely critical that if you if you really want to reach the totality of yourself, you can't be in a simulation. You can't be in an artificial construct and be home. We are we don't belong here. Simple as that. We don't belong here. That's one piece. Dark City is very clear of. The humans in Dark City were taken by the strangers from another world and brought into the Dark City environment. But they, just like Plato's Cave, they don't tell where they came from. No, I, no, no information. And that's how we have to see things. As long as you're in the construct, it doesn't matter whether it's Earth realm, astral realm, uh, super happy realm. It doesn't matter. You're in the construct. You're still, you're still in a layer of Plato's Cave. Plato's Cave has many layers, many, many layers. And if you're going to get out, it requires a lot of work. And, <clears throat> and you have to see this clearly. You have to see this clearly. And you have to recognize this. Can I, I talked about this in a video where I talked about, is this a school? Is this a prison? Well, it can't be a school, right? It can't be a school. And I'm going to read a simple paragraph that I have about in the, in the Westworld chapter. I'm going to read that to you. Uh, the reason it cannot be a school is because of the memory wipe. This is something that happens to every, every single time you get tricked back in here. And you get tricked. You get tricked and deceived and contracted back in here. That's, that's clear. Exactly how it happens, exactly what I'm still, I'm working on that very, very hard now. But that part is pretty clear. And you're given a memory wipe. Like we talked about before, it's pretty obvious that if you're going to be, if you're here to learn something, well, you have to have memory. You know, if... If I if I touch a stinging nettle plant and I burn my fingers, the memory becomes valuable because next time I go to the plant, oh yeah, I have to wear gloves so I don't get stung again this time. Yeah, right. You you learn through memory. If your memory is taken away, then there is no learning. And if you figure every single life is wiped out completely, then it doesn't matter what you did in a pre it doesn't matter what you do in this life. It doesn't matter how much you learn in this life. If you're going to come back in a new one and all of this is erased from your memory, your learning is zero. Each time a Westworld robot has died, they are taken to mission control for a cleanup and then a memory wipe so that they will forget the last incarnation and go back into the field with their programming intact so they can be shot or raped again. That is the big reason for the memory wipe in our life, because if we really could remember how much suffering we had gone through in life after life, we would have long ago shut down any incarnations here. The whole reincarnation soul trap can only work with a memory wipe. But as mentioned, that means learning is out of the question. We are just here to be used. Exactly what we are used for. Simple energy food for the system is speculated, or as an entertainment non-player character pieces for non-human entities to come into this realm? That's hard to say. But again, a key element is having no memories of other lives. Once that changes in Westworld, when Dolores and Maeve begin having memories of their other lives they've had and how they've been treated, a new inner strength emerges for them to break out of the Westworld prison. This show, at least season one before the series began to change into something else, was about prisoners in Plato's cave realizing their real situation and deciding to get out no matter what it takes. And that's where we have to be, right? We have to see that a big part of this is a happy, wonderful place what you might call love and light spirituality, that's the blue pill of Morpheus. And the average person can't get enough of it. If you really want a red pill, you have to be ready to leave. And to leave properly means you've got to prepare for what you're going to deal with after the transition death phase. It's not to be afraid of death. It's the opposite. It's to become unbelievably immersed in trying to understand it. I don't, you know, I don't know what's going to happen after I die for sure. Of course, I've had my death experiences. I have some ideas, but now I see I've taken things too much on 
hope too much on concepts, too much on whatever, and just kind of just left it there saying, yeah, I, you know, I'm prepared. I, I know about death. And I don't. And it's a big part of this work for me personally is going the next step and saying, what is the most likely things that are going to happen that are going to be placed upon us? And how do we be as ready as possible to deal with what's going to happen? Pretty simple, right? Um, you know, so this book is going through all of that, all of these, these areas from subject to subject to subject, detail, detail to detail. I just wanted to let you know where this work is, is going, where this work is progressing, where this work is, I hope, going to take all of us into a new realm of possibility and seeing, and it's going to be really, really hard for people. Certainly, the, if, if an average person, the people watching my channel, you know, you're somewhat prepared for what I'm going to say, but I'm even going to, I'm even going to be stepping on a lot of the stuff I've said in my books or said in videos before. I'm, I'm literally overturning a lot of my own presentation, a lot of my own belief structures, not that it's necessarily unimportant. It's important to a certain point or it has its time, it has its place. But it, if you hold on to that, even these ideas of oneness or self-realization or any of these terms, these are these become traps like any other traps. You have to see your situation, our situation, clearly devoid of all hopes, wishes. Um, you have to see it in stark honesty. And once you see it in stark honesty, something can happen. And I'm hoping that the book will, because like I say, there's lots of this information coming out. So I don't necessarily need to overload with information, although I, I am putting in quite a bit of information in my own viewpoint on what what this is, where we are, how this is how this has been structured and created. On, many, on different levels. But the most important part is then to ask, so what? And this is what you should be doing of every book now, Every because again, things are changing rapidly. And the open doorways that exist for, I think, souls to be done with this place has a finite time in our world of ease of operation. After, an, after a certain point of time, it's going to be much, much more difficult to exit. Not that you can't, but it's going to be more difficult. This is our, this is the opportunity. This is the preparation opportunity where you can do what you need to do, be ready for it when it comes, whether it's next week or 40 or 50 years from now, it doesn't matter, but you're ready. That's what's important. You're ready. You feel confident that, yeah, you know what to do. And um, so because of that, that's what I hope this book is going to share with us. So that's my update for you. Um, like I say, I'm doing good, actually. I feel relatively fine. I've uh, been out every day hilling potatoes. So that's a lot of work for the body. Hilling potatoes and weeding. That's been a lot of my days out here. And putting in, yeah, about eight hour days because I'd like to have this. I'd like to have this ready the first week of September. So I'd like to have what I'm going to have is five or six chapters ready as a PDF download file. First week of September, because the, the whole book is going to, I see now as I go through the mass of material, the mass of notes, it's probably going to wind up being 20 chapters. It's going to be a, a tome, right? It's an opus. Uh, it's going to take me a good, won't be ready for a year. But just the stuff I've been working on, which has been consuming. I, I can tell you it's been consuming and it's been challenging to write, as I mentioned. Chat, but but I I've been overcoming the challenge. The challenge is coming along. I think the I think it's getting more and more clear, more and more easy to present. But it's still it's going through rewrites. It's going through it's going through revisions. But the the goal is that first week of September it's ready. And um yeah beyond that time it's Put in my six to eight hours a day with this. Put in my hours in the field. Uh, try to get a walk by the lake when it's uh, nice and warm out, and um, spend some time just 
you know, because as much as, you know, you have to really, you have to recognize the, that the realm is an insane clown show. It's, it's hell. That's what this is. There's no hell after you die. It's, it's here. This is it. You have to recognize that. But that doesn't mean there are ways that you can, while you're here, because we're in it, all of us, ways that you can make your own realm, make your own experience a little bit smoother. But if you're gonna if you're if you're going out there to fix the world, if you're going out there to fix the world, you're gonna find out that the world the world's going to run like a machine. That's a good way to say it. the world this this realm is a machine and you either have you either have to shut you have to shut down the machine because you're not gonna be able to change it. The machine is the machine is in motion and the machine will keep going. And that's where the majority get caught. The majority get caught. The majority is going to fix the machine. The majority knows. The majority thinks that something wonderful and loving made this place so that they can love and enjoy and experience and and uh, have wonderful things going on. When you see that that's not true, when you finally come to grips with who created this reality, why it was created, and what's being done with it, then then your doorway opens, then your doorway opens. And then you can see more clearly what you have to do, what you have to turn away from. There's going to be a chapter in my book. I talk a bit about this 2004, 2005 area uh, with experiences I had in Egypt and things that happened after my canyon. But there's a lot of other things that went on that was, I'm going to call it deceptive behavior, not the behavior, uh, that I was being deceived and tricked during those two to three years it, in massive ways um, that the that these areas, like I say, there's, there's stacks of notes on this. It's not like new material. It's not like new ideas for me. I've been, I've been into them for 18 or 20 years. They, they come out slightly in Falling for Truth. They come out slightly in some of my videos, but I've, I've kept it a bit to the background because I've kind of felt this material, these topics are sort of, you know, a little lower down the ladder than some other things, and 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 I've been tricked. They're at the top of the ladder. These are the things, um, you and and you can't just rush to the end of this. You you've got to have had some work in your life. Things have had to happen. Contemplation has had to happen. Some real philosophical thinkings had to happen because if this just gets pushed on to you, you know the if if the average person picks up my books and read it, it's going to be they're gonna they're gonna throw it in the garbage because they're just. They're not anywhere prepared for dealing with things that overturn all of their belief structures. So you've had, you can't come to this material without having done work with belief structures and standard ideas and conditioning being overturned. So that work is important because as long as that's there and there is actually space inside of you to take in what is very dangerous and difficult material, then you can, then you can bring it in and you can work with it and you can you can churn it over inside. If you're, if you, if it's just full of belief structures, if it's full of, if it's full of the system, if it's full totally of believing the way the system is and that the system is good still, nothing's going to get through. So all of that stuff has a, has a value and a place, but then it has to be allowed to be dropped. It has to be allowed. You can't keep holding it. That stuff has to go so that you can go further and further and further into harder and harder and more difficult things. So I've been doing that personally. There's been a, at times, a lot of inner, uh, inner um, struggle over this material. Um, but every time I get through the struggle, it's been it's been an incredible sense of freedom, an incredible sense of um, that I feel. I finally feel like I've got the material I'm supposed to be sharing now, uh, and I could have been doing this 20 years ago. I could have been doing this 20 years ago. I want to, and that chapter in the book will come later on. You won't get it in September. It'll take me a while to write it. When I talk about this period, you'll see what was actually going on that created a created a giant U-turn away from it. But maybe this is the right time. Maybe if I talked about all this then, it just the timing wasn't right. Also, there's again, it's a zeitgeist. Just look around. It, 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 this stuff is just popping up everywhere. All over the place. This this is starting to come. 
So it's 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 coming, it's getting back into the consciousness. These ideas of uh, the Nagamadi Gnostics and the and the and the Cathars and the very early Egyptians and some of these other movements. They're, 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 it's it's coming into our surface again because the the outside world is now so insane. Like it's so in, it, it's just oh man, I, I looked through some of Carl Vernon's videos. He calls them like Clown Planet or something, Clown World. I don't know what he calls it. Just the craziest little news pieces from like the last three or four days. Every single one of these is, is more stupid than the last one. We live in a world gone absolutely crazy. And therefore, if you have any opening to it, of course, you're going to start seeing it's always been crazy. This has always been an insane world. I've just been, I've just had a wall up in front of my eyes. I had a veil up to make me think everything is okay. It's never been okay. And now you've got, now there's this huge movement of energy where more and more of this can be seen. Like I say, the problem is then to ask, so what? And that's what you have to do with everything you come to. A lot of information might be presented to you and something, but then you ask, yeah, but so what? How does, how is that going to be able, to, what am I going to do with this in my life right now? What, if, what am I going to be able to use this in my life, in the situation, in the, in the challenge I have right now? Unfortunately, you're going to see a lot of it is just none. It's just information. And information is, can be okay, but there always has to be a so what. Here's the information that's been presented, and here's why I've presented it. This is... This is what you can start to do with it. And um, yeah, that, that has to be there. That always be asking, so what? Because if you can if, if you can look through the material and then get a so what answer, ah, now you know you found not only quality material, you have found pointers and information of how to put it into practice how to use it in your day-to-day -day world if it's just stuff that sits in your head as concepts and ideas and structures, which is 98% of what's out there, you have to ask, where is that really taking you? So that's another reason my, the book is taking so long to, to go through because I have to, I have to sit back and say, when someone's done, did they get, and they, if they ask and they read what they're going to read, and then they say, yeah, but so what? Will they have? Will you have an answer? Will you be able to say, "Oh, yeah, he suggested this. He suggested this." Okay, give that a shot. Because I'm going to go through in more detail on on the life recapitulation and why that's actually critical. I thought it was important before. Now I see it's it's doing something completely different and is pretty critical to preparing us for for our possible exit from the cave and. A number of other things, and of course, each section, as I complete another four or five chapters, there will be more and more recommendations and suggestions. That's after all, everything in this book is a recommendation. It's a suggestion. It's a personal viewpoint based on my experience of things and taking in information that seems to be credible and coming from an honest individual in what they're sharing and sources, ancient sources that I feel are as untainted as possible. Right, unlike Plato's cave, which seems like a very tainted allegory now. Um, like I say, chapter two, <laughs> second chapter is going to upset a lot of people, particularly people who think who like Plato's cave for some reason. Uh, they're going to be quite upset when they see, yeah, but look what's missing in it. <laughs> look what's missing. So, um, yeah, yeah. I guess I will end it there. Um, I will still come back at the end of August, as promised, with a, another update. Uh, I should, I'm hopefully going to be close to having the book ready at that point, or who knows, maybe it might be ready by the end of August, and we can begin the process of making it available to you and moving everything I do in a completely different direction. Things have to, things can't stay static now. You can't keep doing the same thing again and again. You can't keep talking about the same thing again and again. The, the situation in our realm is changing rapidly. The situation in our realm is constantly transforming, not necessarily in good ways, but in that chaotic transformation are doorways to real important stuff. And uh, yeah, go and read Wayne Bush's site. It's tremendous. It's a lot of information there. 
on a lot of subjects, and I'm saying I agree with it all, but he's done a tremendous job in his presentation, and and he has some interviews that he's done on this Forever Conscious channel as well. Again, he seems like a really, just a really genuine person who has dug through their own questioning. Again, uh, Mark seems like a really good guy. It would be, these are people I would love down the road to sit and have a have a coffee with and and discuss all of this all of this material. Um, I also I've also reread. Sorry, I, I, I seem like I'm rambling, but I just want to share where this is where this is going for you. I finally reread or read. I didn't read it previously. The actual chapter in Robert Monroe's book Bar Journeys, I think, chapter twelve, where he talks about louche. He was one of the first ones to present this concept that humans are food for an alien race, that we are just farmed for our energy, that we produce a a specific kind of energy. There's a specific kind of energy he called louche, and humans just have 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 been created to be the best louche creators, the best louche generators. And this whole chapter, written in very symbolic terminology, describes the process of the creation of this realm or not so much the creation of the realm, but the, 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 what would you call it? The, not the manufacture of the realm, uh, the, um, modification, the modification of this realm to where we are now to create a place of conflict and insanity and stupidity because it creates the most of this loose. It's a spectacular chapter. And of course, it's so interesting that he wrote this in 1971. And he hasn't talked about it again ever since. And I was on an interview with him, uh, and um, I didn't ask him. I didn't. I didn't try to pin him down about Louche, which I now look back at. Boy, what a chance I had to actually finally say, "Tell me about Chapter Twelve from on Louche," and I missed my chance. Um, but that's okay. We'll move forward. We'll all move forward, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in a, in a couple of weeks with. Uh, hopefully a very near completed project and we will see where we're all going to go from here check out yeah wayne's thing check out forever conscious research channel you can watch the the interesting little video by matt where he questions some of this stuff and like i say my chapter will go into it i go through every single term surrounded that we have surrounding death and every single term or phrase we have is inverted strange uh, producing bizarre connotations. It's really, really weird. And so, this, as I've talked about, I've always known, and I've always been presented, preparation for death is 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 really a big part of our life. Um, that comes almost any philosopher will have presented that. I've just never understood what preparing means. Um, I think now I'm finally understanding what it means, and and now. It's not just understanding it, right? That's a mental concept. That's that's the intellectual learning part of it. It's the okay. So what? What are you What are you going to do that turns the the, the understanding or the ideas of preparation into actual preparation? What is the doing? So I'm working in that realm, and maybe some of you will um, do the same and follow me along. It would be good to have. Good to have some of you join me in that journey. See you guys in a few weeks. Cheers.